Hello, my name is Dr. Joshua Richter. I'm an associate professor of medicine at the Tisch Cancer Institute, Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, and the director of myeloma at the Blavatnik Family Chelsea Medical Center at Mount Sinai. I'm here today to speak with you about some of the data that we presented at this recent ASH uh, 2022 meeting in New Orleans. The title of our abstract is The Impact of COVID-19 on the Treatment Patterns and Management of Multiple Myeloma, Insights from the Connect MM Registry. So we all recognize that COVID-19 has had a big, big impact on all of our lives. And really, uh, I don't think anyone has been uh, more impacted by this than our patients with multiple myeloma. It's impacted the therapies that are being chosen, their interactions with the healthcare system, and unfortunately, even things like infections uh, have become a major uh, disturbance to the way that uh, the disease may be managed. We wanted to look into this to find out what impact this has had on the treatment patterns that our uh, myeloma care teams have been utilizing to control myeloma during the pandemic. We've used the Connect MM Registry, which is a large US-based multi-center prospective observational cohort of patients uh, from newly diagnosed myeloma all the way through multiple lines of therapy. It's a huge resource of real-world data for us to analyze. We looked at adult patients with multiple myeloma who had enrolled from over 250 community, academic, and government sites. We analyzed patients from the pre-COVID-19 period um, all the way through uh, COVID. Uh, we defined the pre-COVID-19 period from January 1st, 2018 to February 29th, 2020, and then the COVID period during March 1st, 2020 through August 1st, 2021. As we can see, we really found no significant differences in terms of the baseline characteristics for patients in the pre and during uh, COVID-19 period. And I know this slide's got a lot of data on it, but we're really looking at patients in the second line therapy, pre and during, third line of therapy, pre and during, fourth and fifth line respectively, pre COVID-19 and during COVID-19. Here we can see about the lines of therapy, and there were really no major differences uh, either during the COVID-19 period or prior. However, the utilization of anti-CD38 agents like daratumumab were increased. Uh, and there's a lot of potential reasons why this might have been. If we look at a lot of the drugs that we give in myeloma, at least looking at the parenteral ones, meaning things that are not pills, most of them require injections or infusions every one or even two weeks whereas Darzalex can be stretched out to an every four-week period. And we know anecdotally that during COVID-19, patients would be quickly ramped up to receive Darzalex once a month. When we looked at the top regimens that people took during the COVID-19 period, uh, we really see that Darzalex and pomalidomide regimens really were uh, the most commonly utilized, either regimens like daratumumab, pomalidomide index, and elotuzumab, pomalidomide dex. Both of these regimens combine pills taken at home and an infusion or an injection that can be given once a month to minimize the interaction with the healthcare system, especially during peaks of COVID-19. Now, the other thing that we wanted to get a little granularity on is what were these interactions like during the COVID-19 period? And one of the biggest things that we saw of no surprise was a large increase uh, in telemedicine visits. We saw a reduction in the number of in-person visits and a reduction in the number of disease assessments, meaning how often we evaluated the status of your myeloma. Uh, that got fewer and fewer apart, and we kind of stretched out these periods, again, to minimize the interaction with the healthcare system during the heights of COVID-19. So really, to put it all together, uh, we recognize that COVID-19 has had a major impact. We looked at the real-world evidence from community, academic, and government centers that were treated myeloma patients prior to COVID-19 and during. Overall, during the COVID-19 pandemic, patients had fewer in-office uh, visits, they completed fewer disease assessments, uh, and had fewer lab draws during this time. Uh, additionally, we felt that this was, of course, due to uh, the increase in telemedicine visits, um, in terms of therapeutic interactions or therapeutic choices, there wasn't a huge difference. However, there was an 
ramping up of anti-CD38 therapy. Uh, and we predict that a lot of this was due to, uh, again, trying to minimize the interaction with the healthcare system, so to provide a very effective therapy, uh, but only give it once a month and not necessarily even check labs once a month so that we can give patients uh, the ability and safety to remain at home without having the potential risk of coming to infusion centers on a frequent basis. Now, ultimately, we're going to need longer follow-up to figure out what these changes, uh, what effects they've had uh, on how we treat myeloma. Uh, obviously, telemedicine is going to continue. Uh, we're going to evaluate the effect of the transition to more CD38-based therapy during this time and what impact it has on later lines of therapy. Um, and in general, as with any study, there's a litany of people that we wanted to thank uh, for helping to make this possible. Number one, of course, is the patients and the families who uh, helped contribute to this data. They were absolutely key to our understanding of how to more optimally treat patients in the future. We'd like to thank the Connect MM Registry co-investigators who participated in this evaluation. Um, this uh, registry and these studies are supported uh, by Celgene, which is a BMS company. Um, and overall, just wanna thank everyone for uh, their participation and helping us better understand uh, multiple myeloma. Thank you.